we are going to be looking at the book Constellations, An Easy Guide to Discovering the Stars for Kids. And it's by Kelsey Johnson. And we're just going to look at some of this. You guys remember what a constellation is? Hmm, we're going to find out. So I am going to read just some parts of it and show you some different parts as well. I love this. It says to all the stargazers who ponder the night sky and wonder what might be. So when you're pondering, you're thinking or wondering, questioning. So if you look up at the sky and question and wonder, that is who this is for. I love that. So there's a huge table of contents. So um, like I said, we're going to just kind of look at it. And they also kind of rate our constellations here. I love this. The amazing universe. Remember, everything that exists is in the universe. All right. It says, you are part of an amazing universe. People have gazed at the night sky for thousands of years and wondered what they are seeing. Different cultures have seen different pictures in the stars and imagined magical stories. These pictures made of stars in the sky are called constellations. We have even used the stars and constellations to help us. For example, Polaris, also called the North Star, has guided many people on journeys. Today, very few people know the constellations. Are you ready to begin the learning, the ancient skill of how to read the night sky? Let's get started. <clears throat> so it says the stars you can see change during the night. So the earth is always turning, and as it turns, we see different parts of the sky. Do you guys remember that? So um, as it's turning, it looks like we're seeing different stars, or we are seeing different stars. It looks like they're moving, but we're the ones moving. So it says, try this. Slowly turn around and around. Three, two, one. What do you see? Turn around more. Three, two, one. What do you see? Three, two, one. What do you see? So you can see that we see different things as we're turning around, just like earth does. All right, so it says the same thing happens with Earth. The stars you can see in the sky change as Earth's turn. So that's awesome. There's also stars that change that we can see from the seasons. And it says the stars you can see depend on where you are. The Earth is shaped like a big ball. There is an imaginary line around the middle of the Earth called the equator. The equator divides the Earth into two halves, and each half is called a hemisphere. You can only see stars that are above where you are on the Earth. If you take a trip to the other hemisphere, you will see different stars. So in this book, we will learn about constellations that can only be seen from the Northern Hemisphere. So let me just show you what, what, what we're talking about here. So um, if we have our Earth, you guys know the equator is here in the center. It's kind of like the belt of Earth. So we have the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And then you probably have also learned about the Prime Meridian um, that goes here. And the Prime Meridian um, shows, it separates our Eastern and Western Hemisphere. For what we're talking about, we're just talking about the equator. Uh, we're looking at the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The United States is in the Northern Hemisphere. So we're focusing on all the stars that we can see on the top half of the Earth, okay? And remember, we had that one star directly above the axis, the, the North Star, so it looks like it's not moving. But if you were to go to the Southern Hemisphere, like um, parts of Africa, parts of South America, um, Australia, Australia, New Zealand, um, some of these Asian islands like Indonesia, um, you would be in the southern hemisphere, and so you would see different sets of stars. So when we're talking right now, it's just for the northern hemisphere because that's where we live. Put that globe there. So it says, what's a constellation? Have you ever done a connect the dots puzzle? Constellations are like connect the dots puzzles in the sky. Where the stars are, the dots. Uh, people have looked at the stars for thousands of years and imagined connecting them into patterns. These patterns of stars are called constellations. Many constellations are named after mythical creatures and people. There are also patterns of stars called 
Asterisms. Asterisms are smaller than constellations. Some asterisms, like the Big Dipper, are famous. And different cultures have seen different patterns in the stars over time. In this book, we will learn about the official constellations used by scientists today. So it says there are 88 official constellations. And if you are far away from city lights, you can see about 6,000 stars with your own eyes. The amazing universe. All right, so I'm gonna be honest here. I am not somebody who naturally can see the constellations, nor have I ever really um, studied them closely other than you know just kind of teaching some general knowledge about them. Uh, the Big Dipper is really the only one that I can spot because somebody pointed out and said, okay, here is the handle, here is the ladle, because it looks kind of like a, a, a ladle or a soup spoon. Um, so this is a skill. Some of you might really enjoy this and already know about them, and others, this might be something that you um, want to know more about. It says you can see other things in the night sky, too. When you are looking at the stars, you might see some other objects. So sometimes we can see the moon, and the moon does have different phases. Sometimes you'll be able to see other planets. Sometimes you'll see those shooting stars or those meteors. <laughs> and sometimes we can see satellites. It says some satellites go all the way around Earth 18 times in one day. So um, a book like this is really awesome because people are able to, um, you know, write down how to find the constellations. Like there's a little trick with your hands for degrees, um, using maps of the sky. So finding points that you can look at finding landmarks. There's all different kinds of things. Um, and also there are different um, constellations during just different seasons. So I'm just going to show you a couple of these. So this one in the spring, if you're looking north, the Big Dipper, see how this that white? It's kind of like a spoon, but there is this bare one, right? So that's Ursa Major. So many different cultures have seen a bear shape in the stars of Ursa Major. Other cultures have seen the shape of a wagon, a plow, or even a coffin. So that is in the sum, or in the, the um, here's the North Star. This is in the spring. And in the summer, it, it's the same one, but it's kind of rotated. See how it's rotated in the fall and the winter. So, you know, you could use a picture or some sort of guide like this to be able to help you if you were looking for specific constellations. And it says the Big Dipper is actually not a constellation, it's an asterism. And this pattern of stars is one of the easiest to recognize in the northern sky. Um, and so the Big Dipper is part of Ursa Major, that's the Big Bear. So it kind of gives you a guide um, to look up. And we remember we talked about that, how it looks like all the stars are moving, um, except for the North Star, because that's directly above our North Pole. Um, but none of them are. It's us that's moving. And it says if you can find the Big Dipper, you can find the North Pole. Um, you know, so you could look star by star. You can try to find some of that. Um, and so then the rest of this book has um, just different constellations based on the season. So I got spring, summer. See, these are all the little dots that, and then people have made those pictures around to kind of study the night sky. And I've used the word navigation that people use these for navigation. You know, we use it to find our direction, to find our way. So I think that is a really neat little book. Um, and it's got some glossary here and just some added information. Um, but they also have like different sky maps. So this is kind of like that star finder that I showed you before. So we have that. So that is the end of this book, but we're not done talking about stars and constellations. So stay with me. <laughs> the Constellations book reminded us that Earth's rotation makes the sun, stars, and moon appear to change position in the sky. We know it's rotation's fault though. We also learned that stars appear in patterns called constellations. To learn more about constellations, let me show you this cool app called Skyview. 
this app has a free and a paid version. But what you do is you turn on the app and you put it up in the sky and it will locate the stars and then show you the constellations. So you can see how they connect those dots or connect those stars and show you the image. Um, you might be able to see the um, planets as well. I'm doing this during the day, but it also works at night. It's neat to see how the constellation positions change from day to night. Constellations aren't just for fun. Some navigators or people who are traveling would use the stars to help them find direction, especially our North Star, Polaris. What constellations can you find? All right, we are gonna go ahead and check out star size now. Let's talk about star size. All right, you may have noticed that I have um, some different uh, balls in here in my office today. Um, I have this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, these are all going to be representing stars in our night sky. And I used different balls of different shapes and sizes. So I know this is an Earth. We're going to pretend it's a star just for this demonstration. Because we know that the sun is a medium-sized star. But it looks largest to us on Earth. Um, and that's because it's our closest star. So even those stars that look like little points of light far off in our night sky they could be bigger than our sun, and it's just because they're super far away. So I thought we could do a little demonstration so you could better understand what, what's happening here. So I'm gonna show you another star. Okay, remember, these are models, we're just pretending. Here is my star. No. Look at this star. Look how big it looks. This one that looks so gigantic compared to the other ones, that's because it is closest to my camera. But if I step back and I put it here, you guys can see it's way smaller, right? So it's all about how close something is. By the way, atomic fireball. Mm. All right, let's try another one. New sun. So look. My softball sun looks huge. Well, <laughs> caught it. Uh, my softball sun looks huge. Looks huge next to the Nerf ball, the Earth ball, all of these. But it's only because it's so close. So if I back up and put them all the same distance, you can see that. But, you know, with our Earth and our space and our sun, we can't do that. So when you're looking at the sun, and you think, oh my gosh, it's so huge, it's so big. It is, because it's way bigger than our Earth. But there's other stars that are bigger too. We'll do one more. Or a couple more. I got to get rid of that atomic fireball. Uh, maybe you didn't know about my special skill here, but Mrs. Allforce can talk like Elmo. And here's my Elmo son. So look, look how big that looks. It's just because it's closest to you. So even the ones that look like tiny points of light in the sky, those stars, they can be huge too. They just look so tiny because they're so far away. What if I tried something like this? That looks super big too because it's super close. But when I back away and, and put them all close together, you can get a better idea of the size. So remember that when you look at the sun, it is not just um, a star and it's not just the biggest star. It's actually a medium sized star and it only looks so huge because it's so close. We can see other stars that are way bigger or even smaller or the same size, but they might look like little tiny points of light because they're so far away. All right, let's review. We know the sun is one of many stars that exist in the universe. It only appears to be the largest 
because it is the closest star to Earth. It's the only one in our solar system. Some stars are larger and some stars are smaller than our sun, but our sun is just a medium-sized star. We also talked about those groups of stars called constellations. Can you locate any in the sky? All right, that's it for me on the constellation and star size video. I hope you learned a lot. Take care. Peace.